Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pony 411. This is episode 138 for the week of April 17th. I'm Nemesis, and I'm joined by my co-host, Alcatraz. A. Yeah. Yeah, we got a new episode, of course. A spike one. A spike as we one. Um, briefly mentioned last week. <laughs> briefly mentioned. <laughs> yeah, but we also got a bit of news to cover beforehand, and a comic, as well as a couple fan songs towards the end of the show. Yes. Not much happened this week for me. I got Force Awakened yeah. on Blu-ray, which is nice. Watched some of the deleted scenes and stuff. Those were nice, too. I made more progress on fixing my car, right. which is good. And I guess that's about it. Yep, oh, that's about playing it. some Halo 5 war- Firefight, that's been pretty fun. Yep. It's going to be almost over by the time this comes out. Yeah, it will be pretty much over. But that's not why we're here. Nope. So we're going to just jump right, right into the news. If you want to follow along. Pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. It's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. So let's get going with some convention news. The Friendship Express is returning to Malaysia this November 19th through 20th. Yep. And technically not a convention, but close enough. Big Red Comics in Los Angeles is holding an MLP event on April 23rd. Going to have prizes and trivia and all that stuff. So if you're in Los Angeles... And you're into comics. Why not? Check it out. And Tabitha St. Germain will be coming to BronyCon. Yay. And in our final bit of convention news, Everfree Northwest has released their schedule. So check that out if you're going there like we are. And our lone piece of fandom news. Do you play Kerbal Space Program? Well, it now has a pony, pony mod, so you can send them to your doom. No. You monster. No. I have yet to lose a Kerbin, yeah, though. Yet. Yet. It's I don't, don't want to... I don't want to... It's inevitable. Yeah. Anyway, in merchandise news, Hasbro released their 2015 annual report. It's mostly stuff we know, but it's now in one PDF to go browse. Yep, easy to yep. go through. You know, billion dollar franchise, uh, Equestria Girls are down, MLP's up, which was offset by the Equestria Girls being down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. None of, none of the uh, minis have factored into it yet. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Yes, basically. Numbers, business, num- business, 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 numbers. Yep. <laughs> And the Gameloft MLP game, yes, we're moving this back to merchandise. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> the Game, Gameloft MLP game has received a big update, which is apparently party-themed. Plus, party it appears, themed. appears Spike is now a character you can have in Ponyville, I guess. Yes, it took them long enough to put Spike in there. I'm surprised it wasn't. It's kind center. of low priority. Yeah. He's always kind of been there talking. <laughs> yeah. He's just not there physically. The image looks a little weird, too. A little bit. Yeah, there's a bunch of new stuff. Apparently, raves are there now and whatnot. So, if you have the game, you probably already looked at it a little. Yep. Brazilian Burger Kings are getting MLP toys. And apparently, they come with stickers for Yay, like, stickers. the eyes and the cutie mark. Yay, stickers. Everyone likes yeah. stickers, right? And don't know if they're coming anywhere else, but there in Brazil, <laughs> I guess. So, if you're over there. Yeah, in Brazil, down there. Okay. Stickers. <laughs> Build-A-Bear's Princess Luna has been restocked. It may not be by the time you hear this because those things are probably going to go like hot mm-hmm. cakes. Although, I keep hearing rumblings that apparently Build-A-Bear might actually have, may be losing the license to Pony soon. Oh, that's weird. So, I don't know what's going on there. That would be surprising, though, because they're making good money. Well, they that. are, but they still, Hasbro might still pull the license for some reason or another. Huh. More Equestria Girls minis have been listed on Amazon, including the Applejack School Dance set and the Rainbow Dash School Pep Rally set. She finally has her skorts. Yes, her skorts. And a pair of yellow ears. Yes. I think it's, a lot of them are starting going to get those. And some pylons. All school spare ones have the yellow those little are headbands. Traffic but they're also cones. called pylons. They're yes, called traffic pylons. I'm just saying. I need additional pylons. Well, Rainbow Dash has you covered. Yep. <laughs> and we have a block of book news. The Legend of Everfree book now has a synopsis, although it really doesn't tell us anything new. No. Not really, although it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure if this is just weird wording or something we just kind of glossed over, but it says, let's see, Camp Everfree is in danger of closing down. It's up to our Equestria Girls and their newfound super abilities to throw a kiss to Gala fundraiser to show their support and help save the camp. Yeah, newfound. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's just a odd wording or if that actually means something. Yeah, are we going to see some new actual new for this movie and series? Yeah, because we already know they pony up and stuff, but who knows what beyond that. Yeah, who knows. 
Anyway, the Trouble with Trixie book has been pushed back until January 10th, 2017. Apparently they really are having troubles with Trixie. Yeah, Sethisto M. Cry. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, the legend thing. It, legend. Legend of Everfree. Equestria Daily. There's no S. Anywhere in the title. <laughs> Figured it out. Uh... Anyway, Starlight's upcoming book now has a title, Starlight Glimmer and the Space-Time Suite. Oh, boy. I don't know what that's about. No one does yet, but space-time. Space time. Well... Space-time continuum. That's... Well, she did have the whole... I know, but time this thing. is... It might be related to that. I... It's supposed to be when she's good now, so I don't know what's going on there. I don't know either. Whatever. It's a Doctor Who reference. Just no. Just to spite you. <laughs> no. That's bad. It's terrible. It's or it awful. could be Back to the Future reference. Which That'd be, be better. Thing. That'd be far better. Anyway, in comic news. Apparently the MLP comics are getting a Portuguese translation for Brazil. Brazil's getting a lot of funny stuff. Yeah. I guess it's kind of really... I think yeah, Latin America and South America are both starting to really uh, like ponies. Yay. Anyway, issue number 42 of Friendship's Magic is Katie Cook's last My Little Pony comic, at least for the known future. Yeah, she's got a lot of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, she's got some so. projects coming up for the next few years, which she's going to focus on. So she's pretty much done. Aww. For now. For now. Hopefully. Who knows, Who knows what will happen we in the future. More I know lately, I'll be honest, I've been kind of uh, less than thrilled with a lot of the work she's been outputting. Yeah, you have been. And you have been too. A little, yeah. Anyway, wish her luck. Our final piece of news. Yes, Friendship is Magic. Upcoming episode details have been released. Episode 9 got a title, Saddle Row, and Wreck, and a synopsis. Yeah. When Rarity opens her flagship store in Manhattan, a tell-all article threatens to expose how badly her friends almost ruined the grand opening. Huh. Huh, indeed. Her friends ruining things again. Not the first time they've done that. Well, they've all ruined things for each other. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes one of them ruins things for everyone else. Or they all ruin it for everyone. Like, like Rarity tried, decided to become a slave driver. Yay! Oh, I was wait. thinking the whole events of the gala. The first yeah, gala. That was all of them. Yeah. <laughs> or Applejack being stubborn and ruining things for everyone. Yay! Because she decided, I can do it all myself. Who needs sleep? Who needs sleep? You need sleep. Anyway, speaking of Applejack, episode 10 got a title, and it's Applejack's quote-unquote day off. Yes, there actually are quotations. Yeah, there are actual quotations around day. It's so I'm curious what that's about. They don't have a synopsis yet. No syno yeah, no synopsis, but that's kind of like, hmm, mm. wonder what that's going to be. Applejack taking a day off, though? Quote, unquote, day quote, off. unquote. Yeah, it's like, I don't see her actually doing that. Exactly. That's why I'm starting to wonder. There's, there's hidden meaning here. That's possibly what it's about. Is, you know, Turns out it's actually just night. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she spends it with Luna. I don't know. Are I don't you know. inciting the shippers? Yes. I cite them into a riotous lust. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, that's all for the news for now. Actually, that's not all. Yes, I'm abusing my edit powers while I can, because the synopsis for episode six just got released as of this morning. And, well, that's late, too late for us to put in the episode, but... It is. When Starlight Glimmer starts becoming friends with a fellow formerly bad pony, Twilight tries to stop her. That's quite interesting. I can only think of a handful of redeemed ponies who have been in this show. And I'm polling for one, but I'm really trying not to get my hopes up because I don't want to get disappointed. And of course, it's also the question, why would Twilight try to stop Starlight from making a friend? That's also a bit of a mystery. So that's two big questions because of a vague synopsis. Yeah, I'm kind of excited because I'm just really hoping, but... And Alcatraz isn't here to stop me and roll his eyes, so hopefully <laughs> it happens. I'm really hoping for it, but it's probably going to be Trixie, if anything. But I'm hoping for Sunset. Everyone hope for Sunset. We won't find out for another two weeks from now. Ah! Anyway, back to your uh, regular podcast. Like I said before, we have a comic. It's issue 41 of the Friendship is Magic series. Yep. And it's called Rainbow Dash and the Very Bad Day. Very bad day. Hey, and it was written by Katie Cook. Hey. With art by Andy Price. Hey. And the thing that's special about this particular issue, it's an homage to Little Golden Books. 
If you didn't you, have You those, probably grew up with those. Unless you're really young. And they're still coming out, so they, yeah. you probably grew up with those. And unless if you, you didn't, you had a horrible childhood. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so it's very different. It doesn't have a lot of traditional comic panels. No. Because of that. So it's narrated by Zakor and it's basically... So it's in rhyme. And it's basically about Dash having a less than good day. Less than good is putting it mildly. Yes. And because of her grumpiness, it spreads. Yep. And everyone starts becoming grumpy. And that's the gist of it. <laughs> I was actually pleasantly surprised by this. This is actually a pretty fun one. I mean, it kind of, I guess, hits a bit of nostalgia part of my brain because of the little brown thing. But little it's just, golden thing? Yeah. Little, yeah. You said brown. Yeah. I was, I was little brown books. They're the ones who do the MLP yeah. books. But anyway, little golden books. Yeah, because of that, it has the occasional actual normal comic panels. But it's just kind of fun, I think, watching this. And just just all the little... The art is just really, I think, what really sells it here. It's got a whole bunch of different styles. Mm-hmm. There's even a bit around that's a Peanuts there. homage. Yeah. It's just really just kind of overall just a fun. It's it's pretty, you know, a light story because, again, it's little golden books. It's little golden books. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be. But it's very light. It's very light. It's got a lot of little jokes here and there and as typical of Price and Cook. And it's just a little, it's just a fun little read. It just kind of, if you want to go back down memory lane, I guess, in a way, this is a good comic issue to pick up. It, it was definitely interesting. Um if you've ever read little or been r- read to these uh, little golden books, mm-hmm. they did a very good job paying homage to them. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is how those kind of books are written when dealing with a continuity or existing character set. The personalities are going to be a little bit different just because in order to fit it. I mean, the characterizations were interesting. If you read you know, any of the other comics or watch the show they don't fully match up but that's sort of what you'd expect for a little golden book because they have to change it to fit the story flow i would have to say i didn't say anything wrong with uh, personalities or anything that's because you're not a rainbow dash fan oh right (laughs) so i'm actually a bit more objective in this possibly but it's just like either way it flows the whole kind of jumping quickly between things you know she gets upset instantly and then everything's better instantly that's just how little golden books kind of go well there's the story time passed so it's not really instant i think they've i'm I'm trying to say a good thing here but yes it i think they they paid homage really well and i think it was well written for being an homage to little golden books also even has a little thing to put your name yep. because that's what they all had. Yep. So I think it just, it's a wonderful little thing. I honestly say pick it up for sure just because I was just really surprised. And there's actually multiple variants and like three of them actually have diff- or, uh, some sort of a reference. Even though one of the covers isn't really a good reference for Golden Books. It's just a art reference to an art piece instead. Yeah. Just. Just go pick it up. It's yeah. it's a fun one. Yeah, especially if you remember Little Golden Books. Because mm-hmm. I think it does a very, very good job at paying homage. And that is that. That's that. So now we got an episode. We do. A spike episode. A spike episode. I was filled with dread for a week. Yep. Anyway, it's called Gauntlet of Fire. That's a really good title. Yeah, it is. But in this one... Spike and Rarity are going gem hunting. Spike starts to glow and burn and everything, and then Itch. He, it's 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 a burning sensation. Which <laughs> oh there's creams for that, by the way. <laughs> anyway, he starts to glow and stuff, and he has you know he goes to Twilight. They go to Twilight because something's wrong, and then the other princesses are there, and they say, "Oh, this this is something that means the Dragon Lord's calling him." And they have they go off, and Twilight and Rarity follow him just to observe and make sure he's everything's all right and all that stuff. And it turns out the Dragon Lord's retiring. He wants a new Dragon Lord, so he has his staff. He wants them all to retrieve. They have to go into a volcano and it's every dragon for themselves. And we got an old dragon from um, Dragon Quest coming back. Gargle. Yeah, Gargle. And he also meets the daughter of this Dragon Lord, Ember. Well, the, you know, because the things at first she's forbidden, but then they go to the island. It turns out she's there, and they wind up helping each other. And they go through go through all these trials. And first she flies off because she doesn't want friends. Then she comes back because, no, actually, never mind. I changed my mind, all that stuff. And then... He gets the staff, and then she, he gives it to her because she deserves it, and then she becomes Dragon Lord, and they go home, and everything's happy at the end. 
That skipped over a lot of details, but it worked. Well, it's a summary. It's supposed <laughs> it to skip over details. We talk about the details in the discussion. Yes. Anyway, I was actually really surprised by this episode because, as most of you probably know, I'm not much of a Spike fan. Really? I thought you loved Spike. I think most of his episodes are pretty weak. See, Princess Spike. Spike at your service. Uh, all's well that ends well. I can go on. These are all episodes I'm not really too fond of for various reasons, but more of them include because it's about Spike. But this is actually a legitimately good episode. Not a legitimately good Spike episode, but a legitimately good episode period. And I was honestly surprised by that. It got a lot of little lore we've all been wondering about, which we got a lot of. We got a lot of funny little jokes. We got just, well, Twilight being all a nerd and wanting to study everything which made me happy twilight being twilight and we haven't got little details which we've all kind of guessed on but we finally get to see for real like the princess is just oh we're so busy now we could actually just hang out and have just hang out together and just have fun for once <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course everyone as soon as they get there oh it's so great to be oh nope there they go yeah i know but <laughs> still it's kind of nice to actually see that they okay they actually want to do this stuff just hang out to each, each other with each other so yes the other princesses are twilight's friends yes <laughs> so yes i was actually legitimately and pleasantly surprised by this yeah this is basically dragon quest 2.0 yeah or the sequel to dragon quest more or less which was itself a fairly good spike episode yeah yeah, it's, <laughs> it was really well done. And not in spite of Spike. He was just well written for this one. It it fit. Yeah, they finally did it. It fit. He fit his character. He fit the episode. It was good. Yeah, they finally did. Although, I still think that in this case, it's um he needed someone else to bounce off of a little. It, it kind of, to me, because with Ember and whatnot, he needs someone to bounce off of or else it because when he's trying to carry again when he carries by himself it tends to fall apart but here when you put him with someone it where he works better as a character he needs yes. someone else to bounce yeah. off of or like all the main six i could say they could carry things by themselves all of them can carry an episode almost by themselves spike you put him by himself it starts to fall apart he needs someone to bounce off yeah of. his character is basically either he's either the butt monkey as which i'm happy with with, you know, comedic relief, butt monkey, or he's the grounding character f- for someone else. Mm-hmm. He he keeps someone else grounded or shows them the way to do it. No, I'm not shy about the fact that I prefer him as the joke. Yeah. But this was, he was there basically to be the grounding character for... A brand new character. A brand new character to show them the correct way to do things. Although we got to see more, a bit about him too, although... He he! I noticed he didn't really learn much himself, if anything. No, it was about him teaching. Yeah, it was him teaching, which, again, it's just when he's a... It's sort of weird. It's a, his episode, but he's also sort of a supporting character in a sense. Sort of, yeah. It's interesting. So it's an odd one. that it's still, He's still a supporting character, but it's still the main character. It's like, okay, I'd, ow. <laughs> Try not to think about it too much. It works. Because, yeah, he always works the best as a supporting character or as a joke character, and that's what I've always said. And whenever they try to make him a main character, they just try to make him the main character, and it collapses around falls him. apart. Yeah, it collapses everything. Like Princess Spike is a really good example of how not to do Spike episodes. It just... Or Secret of My Excess is actually one that was good in spite of Spike. And kind of also funny because... Yeah... That was, that was one of those that was good in spite of Spike, just because it was fun watching him rampage and destroy stuff. Yeah. Because he's not really a character anymore so much as he's just a monster now. Yeah. But Spike at your service is one that's just fell apart compl- in every single possible level. There's a Spike episode, and he's trying to carry sp- with Spike almost, exclu- and then also Spike was even worse, more poorly written than usual, so... But anyway, this one kind of makes up for all that. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It, it was and, really, really well done. And the nice thing is, in this one... We got a whole bunch of stuff about dragons we never had before. Because as even they've said in the show before, dragons, we don't know much about them. Yeah. Of course, they always bring the question, where the heck did Celestia get this egg? Yeah. Or whoever had the egg. Someone had the egg. Why do they have it? Where did it come from? Yeah, they, they have some experience. They just haven't, they haven't dealt upon what experience Their they experience have mostly they is have. run away from the dragons. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the, well, right or in the ponies beginning. ponies in general. Yeah, well, right in the beginning when they brought Spike into the, the castle and... 
you know, Luna said, we don't know that much about dragons, but, but we know when they're we glowing. Know what this, we know <laughs> what this means. When they're glowing, that means the dragon lord wants them. Yeah. I mean, we learned, you know, that dragons are inherently very selfish. We kind of already knew that. Yeah. Although the dragons are very selfish and self-centered. Yeah. Um, they look very much look down on ponies. Oh, yes. And they're also very aggressive, and they have their heart. Actually, have okay, they do have a, a leader, though. We yeah, have there that is now. A somewhat of a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy. There is a leader. Uh, 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 they have their own kind of royalty thing, except it looks like. Except it's not inherited. It's not. It's not inherited. You have to fight for it, but it's not any. It's not uh, democratically elected or anything. It's Trial you all fight fire. for it, and whoever wins gets to be the leader now. Yeah. Which makes me wonder if there's any sort of rules about if you assassinate the Dragon Lord, do you become keep Dragon you Lord kill. yourself? Yeah, the whole keep what you kill thing. Or do the other dragons just pile on you and then they'll fight amongst each other who gets who we Dragon Lord? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, it is a bit interesting. The, the Dragon Lord, when he retired, he said something about the rules. Yeah, the rules. There are rules, apparently. Unfortunately, because the rules, I have to retire. Yeah, there's some sort it's of like rules which even the Dragon Lord will not touch. Yeah, so I'd like a little bit more information on that. I might not get that, though. Who I knows? don't think I will, but it would but be cool. What's also interesting, the Dragon Lord is gigantic. Holy crap, he was huge. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he was holding this staff, which is a full-size staff for all the dragons, and it's a toothpick to him. Yeah. So he's gigantic. I don't know if it's because he became Dragon Lord or if he was just a naturally big guy or... Yeah, because I mean, we've, we've seen, seen big dragons before. And we've seen they grow depending on their staff. Right now, we, most of these horde. dragons we see are small like actually most of them are maybe pony size or a little bit bigger yeah and then we got this guy who's gigantic we've seen before when you saw dragons they well were pretty big creatures yes so i don't know if these are all just young dragons or what and then there's where are the other big dragons are they all just like eh, whatever are they their own nation or whatever maybe why didn't they come when the dragon lord called maybe they didn't want to maybe they're too big to give a rip I don't know, because they're also considered pretty big, too. So, it's kind of interesting, too. So, it's one of the things, it's one of the, we might be seeing a, a process of a retcon right now. We could be. We could be. It is a bit interesting. It might be decided to resize the dragons. Yeah. Maybe those other dragons just got greedy. Because <laughs> we got that established. But it was also interesting, because they kind of also touched on this topic of um, Spike's the only dragon without wings, period. Yeah, they made a quick mention, and then nothing else. They didn't really talk a huge about that, but they did bring it up. Yeah, it's weird, because it seems to imply dragons should, by default, have wings, and Spike doesn't. So why does he not? I wonder if it's a birth defect. Maybe. Oh, boy. I wonder if there's a connection between... Oh, boy, there's some fan fiction. Maybe he... Right there. Spike was a rescued egg. Maybe that's the reason why Celestia had the egg. Yep. It could be that. We don't know. Or maybe it's because he was hatched with pony magic. There was some sort of crossover there. Boy, that would put a lot of guilt on Twilight. Even though she didn't know better. (laughs) Don't do that, man. That would... uh, (laughs) You know, there's always been the the discussion of Spike is... (laughs) Twilight's basically Spike's mom. Yeah, you go, which literally, ba- <laughs> she hatched him. You hatched him, and then that and one there's comic, that there. recent co- comic, seems to imply that yes, Twilight is more or less kind of Spike's mom. Although we've had some conflicting information about that. Yeah, that it's, one's a bit interesting. It's more like no, they're siblings, and then no, it's no, it's more of a mother son thing. Whatever. I th- it's like in some ways it is, in other ways it's not. But anyway, it was kind of neat. Uh, garble? No. Yes. Garble, yeah. Yes, yeah, Garble. I was like, no, wait, yes. <laughs> to, but yeah, Garble, th- that was the red dragon from Dragon Quest, who's kind of the leader, ringleader of the other guys, and he's back, and well, surprise, he's still a jerk. A jerk. <laughs> and he doesn't learn anything by the end except humiliation. Nope. Yes. Because, <laughs> well, again, dragons aren't inherently selfish. They don't like showing weakness or anything, and well, when Spike <laughs> got the staff, he tells him he has to hug every dragon he sees. Without and telling them why. It, yeah, and can't tell them why. And so he's humiliated because he has to hug them all, including the Dragon Lord. Spike, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> yeah, and there's a bunch of, you know, just a bunch of just 
new dragon designs, which is interesting in of itself. We got lot. We got a couple female dragons. Yeah, a couple. Two. We got, saw two for sure. Two for sure. One of them being an actual character. One being was developed. Ember. One is just there. <laughs> yeah. One of the background dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Ember, who was the princess, I guess. Yes. Who was yeah the dragon lord's daughter? Interesting enough, and what was the dragon lord's name? It was Torch. That's what it was. Yes, Dragon Lord Torch. by Matt Calric. Yes, Calric. I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, and Ali Milner as Ember. Yes, which is interesting. Both new. Yeah, both of them new. But it's also again, she's also very small. She's only about twice Spike's height, so he's, she was if roughly that, pony yeah. height. Yeah, or so, maybe slightly taller or so. But it's also it's also kind of funny because they kind of did the same thing they did last time, which was we got to follow Spike into disguise, and this time rather than trying to be a dragon. They win as a rock. Yes, as a rock. A rock. Hello, Mod. Rarity, you've been spending too much time with Mod. Mod, please go, but I want to be around the rock. <laughs> uh, I've already seen stuff like that pop up on yep, Dopey Burrow. Already. It begins again. It begins. <laughs> Speaking of this, <laughs> Spike and Ember oh forged boy. a friendship. And of course, <laughs> people saw it and went, well. <laughs> The shipping. <laughs> the shipping has begun again. So now I'm wondering Sparity if, has competition. I mean, we, again. we got this big thing with Starlight and Spike. Mm-hmm. That, now yeah, we I saw that popping Ember. up. Like, what are you doing? No. It's like, the, is this going to dethrone Sparity? We don't know. Because <laughs> that, that, I think it's almost, the fact, the fact that Spike's much shorter, I think it's implied that she's also kind of younger. We're still in that little uh, conundrum. Conundrum. Because we still don't know how dragons age. Yeah, and there's that, that their whole thing. Their size has something to do with their horde. Way back when in season one, Spike's just a baby dragon. But he's like 10 or something. Yeah. So that's confusing. It's like Pokemon. Oy. You'll be 11 years old for the rest of your life. I thought he was 10. 10, Does it really <laughs> matter? <laughs> yes, because otherwise some wee will come and yell at you. <laughs> Bring it. Be doomed. R.I.P. Alcatraz. Not soon enough. <laughs> anyway. And also in this episode is just kind of um just kind of the um the gauntlet itself was kind of interesting because again it's kind of hey, yeah, you're supposed to have wings. Uh Spike had to swim initially and, and it's also kind that's of funny. They, that's how he met Ember. Yeah. Cause he saved her because she got knocked down and because she was wearing armor to disguise herself because her dad who expressly forbid her from Competing for because some she's reason. too small and weak. Yeah, she's too small and weak, and she wanted to prove that you doesn't just, size and strength is not the only important thing. Turns out, all well, she was right. Turns out she was right. Mm-hmm. Hey, this whole friendship thing might actually work. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was kind of interesting having to watch them work. And it's also um, Twilight and Rarity going around changing disguises constantly to fit in with the new environment because they're first a rock, then there was seaweed, then there was seaweed, then there was a tree, then there yeah there was a tree, and then there was Stala- stalagmites yeah and then they just walked off together undisguised but it's also interesting at one point it's funny they're in the caves and stuff about to get to the the, the staff and then the scepter staff whatever you want to call it and and the ember looks and how did you two get in here <laughs> that's a good question and they're about to answer and then Rarity, Rarity almost, almost fell off. so it's like oh I'm just gonna say te- 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 teleporting him well, yeah it, it, Twilight we got really a canon answer right there Twilight's really good at it's teleportation. It's just kind of Occam's razor. She can teleport. She can teleport multiple people. There you go. Yep. She's just, she's just teleporting them. Just like, I'm the princess of friendship. Friendship is magic. Ergo. <laughs> my, my time magic is, is magic. kind of my thing. Magic's kind of her thing, yes. <laughs> also, it's just kind of funny. I just like the Twilight just getting all excited because she finally gets to do some research and possibly, you know, add, you know, contribute to, uh, you know, re- to science and all this stuff and, Apparently became pen pals with Ember. Yeah, pen pals with Ember, like the Dragon Lord. Yes. It's just kind of funny. It's like, oh, look, diplomatic ties. An ally. They actually use that term. Yeah. They have an ally Twilight. with the Good Dragon Good job, Lords. Twilight. You actually did something to pull up You diplomatic. became an ambassador, a su- another successful Which is something ambassador. you should do. <laughs> yes, that's sort of your job. <laughs> so congratulations. You did a good thing. Yay. Of course, Spike also had to teach her about this whole friendship thing, too, but... But it's just interesting. That, yeah, this okay, we back to this, and I'm wondering where that's going to go, because apparently stuff is already brewing, but that's this whole Twilight and Ember thing already. Yep. 
the, it, it's again, once again, tw- ship Twilight with everyone. Yep. Everyone possible. <laughs> and other than that, it was, um, it's just kind of fun watching this, uh, some of the stuff they're doing. Like the, those, like there's this, there's this creatures that seem to be their sole purpose is to throw rocks with their tails at dragons. Yes. <laughs> Which the, is like the whole gauntlet thing gave me some flashbacks to uh, May the Best Pet Win. The a little bit canyon. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's like, huh. Yeah. Um. There was the, also those weird the stalagmites and stalactites. They were like teeth. Yeah, like teeth going up How and does down. That it's like work. What's, cows. That's going on there. Turns out, no, they actually are in a monster, an actual creature's mouth. Oh. Oh. It's like Star Wars. <laughs> it's just like Star Wars. This is no cave. <laughs> it's not a cave. Oh, no. <laughs> it's also apparently dragons are, well, surprisingly tough. We kind of knew that, though. I know, but really tough. I mean, they're growing ground down between rocks and, nope, they're fine. Yep. And some sort of blast of fire from something. They're not fine. entirely certain. We never saw what that yeah, was. Yeah, it's just, it's, it, they're fine. They're fine. Don't worry about it's it. It's a little bit charred. Speaking of which, I noticed none of the dragons really were breathing fire this time. Noticed that. Except for the Except dragon for the lord. Dragon lord. No one was really breathing fire. It was odd. Yeah. It's all mostly flying around and punching stuff, I guess. <laughs> and speaking, I guess, punching stuff, uh, Ember and Gargle's fight was actually pretty cool. That was pretty cool with the flip at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is overall is just actually pretty well. It's like, yeah, Spike's not going to be able to do much because, well, he's kind of small. Kind of small. He did help, though. Yeah, he helped a little bit, but for the most part, it was, it was mostly Ember doing the work there, and hey, she beat him. Yep. Ah. Good. Still should have thrown Gargle. Spike. That would have been a great Because the way Gargle acts. Because Gargle's a jerk. Gargle is a jerk. Because uh, cause he knows about the whole pony thing, and he's just like, oh, you're hanging around your pony friends? Or... You even mm. smell like a pony. Wait a minute. <laughs> that was another thing is he smelled the ponies and then smelled the ponies and then that was the whole beginning of because you know after Spike saved Ember she's like why would you do that that's yeah, you know that's stupid it's every dragon room and all that stuff and then she saves him or saves his friends yes which is interesting it's like and then of course Tsundere yep soon so 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 I was half expecting them to even reference that by having her actually say Baka at one point. <laughs> I was don't think they go that, that far, but it did seem like that's what they were. And remember, they for. referenced anime with Fluttershy in that Halloween episode. Yeah, but those were just like pictures. They didn't actually have you know dialogue. They also had a grumpy cat. Again, it was just a picture. I'm just saying they, they actually, referenced mm-hmm. stuff before. It would not surprise me if they at one point this dead Baka just just isn't like what. <laughs> it would not have surprised me. I'm not sure if they did though. I'm pretty sure half the fan base would have gone into a blind rage. <laughs> half of it would have. You know, been incredibly excited. The other one would be, yeah. <laughs> panda rings. <laughs> They're throwing pandas at us. <laughs> yes, exactly. But this was actually just overall a really nice episode. It was. It was really. Well I done. was surprised. It's actually, and so far, it's actually possibly the best of the season. Possibly, I would have to go back and make some more side by side comparisons. But it was really good. I will say that. Thing and we're only five episodes in, so yeah, <laughs> not a whole lot yet to really compare, compare it to. to. Yeah, but and apparently, according to Jim Miller, we're getting more Spike episodes later this season. Yes, whether or not that's a good thing or not, we have yet to see because so far the ratio of good to bad Spike episodes has not been great. We've got like two, or we got one that was good, but it was um the problem was well it was good in spite of Spike, and then one that was actually good, and then now we got this one that's also actually good. I'm trying to remember the name. Is the that uh, the two women who wrote this? I can't remember their names. Ah, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> yeah, Joanna Lewis and Christine Sanko. That's who it was. Ah, wrote yes, this one. Those two. So yeah, they came back with this one, and they did a good job. They did. I'm trying to remember what they wrote last time, but I'm pretty sure I remember. I vaguely remember them doing a really good job last time too. Yep. So they seem, they seem to be a good fit for this show. Yes, they do. And I'll, oh yeah, I can't speaking, wait to see more. Something I forgot to bring up was the whole in the beginning with uh, Rarity and Spike in the diamond mine or crystal mine and yep rarity has her hard hat but she put a bow on it because she she's rarity. on her hard hat because she's rarity because she's rarity and of course she oh thanks for being, being my bowl holder what i thought it was your bodyguard <laughs> oh uh, uh. <laughs> of course do that too <laughs> Whew, almost messed that up yeah i was just int- oh yeah and the bats bats and Actual bats, not vampire fruit bats. Yeah, just, just bats. bats. Little bats, which, of course, both already doesn't like bats. Nope. Because they're bats. They're bats. Why would you? 
They get in your face. <laughs> they Especially when you wake up an entire swarm of them. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and as you brought up before we recorded the um, screen wipe they did with the bats was they pretty did. nice. They did. Those, those, well done. Yeah, overall, this, I'm trying to think of, someone said they saw Crackle? Yeah, it was in a background. Hmm. I saw a screen clip of I must it. Have missed it was him. just in the very back corner. Just showed up. Yeah, I must have missed him because uh, I didn't see him. Yeah, I didn't see it while watching, but I saw that. Must have been just a little Easter egg. There's Crackle. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love Crackle. Crackle's great. Best dragon. Yep. I don't care. Shut up. Best dragon. <laughs> he should be Dragon Lord. <laughs> that would have been great. What? what? Did, Wait, the, the staff's not here. Where did? <laughs> or oh. just like you know, I don't want this either, and just tosses the, <laughs> yep. and crackle grabs it. <laughs> yep, yeah, that was kind of funny. So, uh, what was it? Oh, the dragon lord. Uh, there, another thing about the dragon lord is um, he's very demanding. Very demanding. He tells you when you're supposed to be happy and please laughing. Clap. Exactly. You know, he didn't say please. I know. Be abused. Yep. Be sad. Yeah, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if this Ember is going to pop up later in the show or not. I know she's going to probably pop up in fanfics. Oh, oh yeah, fan art for sure because she's already, <laughs> already popped up. Already, already. <laughs> well, that was fast. Yes. <laughs> so overall, very the I think the best Spike episode we've ever gotten. Yeah, I'll say it was. And that it's that it shocks me. That not only that, it's the one. It's a actually good episode. Period. So that honestly surprises me because. We don't good and Spike really don't mix together. Not often, no. So I was legitimately surprised. So if I'm saying it's good, you know something's <laughs> up. It was a good episode. It really was. So yes, that was that's that. I guess yep. we don't have much else to say. Nope. But anyway, music, fan music. music. Yes, three songs. Go. I have three songs, like you said. The first one is "Legacy" by Archie. It's Archie. Yes. Uh, yeah, don't get a huge amount by him re- much anymore. But when we do, it's good. This is a very upbeat, energetic house song, just like you'd expect from Archie. Did it again. Very well done. And I love it. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, I didn't hate it. You didn't I didn't hate it. like it really either, though. It was just, it's it's kind of there. The only the real thing, thing of no I can say is, once again, it's just Archie's common problem of the songs are a little too long. Yeah, I think this one was that long. It's it's long still kind of long feeling. It's just that's a problem I've had with almost every Archie song. It just it feels like it goes a little too long, and this one does the same thing. So other than, it's just I'm not really I'm get most of I'm knows that I'm figuring out I'm not really a huge fan of Archie's work. I guess it's, except for the one or two standouts. I'm just like yeah. okay, yeah, it's there, but I'm just like okay, yeah, that's well, a I thing, like I guess. It questionably on how pony it is but i don't care i like it anyway the next one i have okay i'm gonna break the rules anyway <sighs> hey he put it on his pony channel <laughs> he put a pony picture on it that's enough for me <sighs> anyway the next one i got is freeform by undreamed panic This one's very calm and smooth, so very mellow. It's got Fluttershy vocal clips in it, and I think they work really, yeah. really well. Not, yeah, about the midway ending, through the song. What? About midway through the song. Is when yeah, the clips it's just in. a little bit of Fluttershy vocal clips, and I think it worked really well. Yeah. The ending's a bit abrupt. A little bit. A little bit abrupt. I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> it really needs a better download, though. Mm-hmm. I, I think like, YouTube damaged the quality a bit. But. I like the beat on this one. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, there was there was something in particular. I'm trying to remember what it was exactly, but there was um, yeah, it's just kind of a certain kind of background beat thing that was going on throughout. That was actually pretty neat, and there's kind of also kind of like just this kind of sort of softness to it, <laughs> which is pretty nice. But yeah, I thought it was really well done. The last one I have is out on my own, remixed by Join the Herd. <laughs> Yep, him again. And yeah, this was, I should have predicted it when I heard, first heard the song, because yeah, it came out the day <laughs> the episode came out, just like all the other ones, where he comes out with this really good remix right after the episode comes out. And yeah, it's this one's somber at times, considering the original, but it also has uplifting points to it. Hmm. it. It gives it, he adds a lot of energy to the song while putting his own take. I think he did a really good job once again. Yeah, I think I found it very interesting how we um, messed with the vocals on this one. Yeah, for like the, the, um, the quote unquote chorus. Yeah, that part that was really interesting. I was, was like really liked it a lot how yeah. we did that. And I actually liked this song overall a lot. I think of the three, this is probably the one I liked the most. <laughs> but although I did like Freeform a bit too, but this one just it's like mm, I was found was pleasantly surprised by it. It's like oh yeah, it's the Apple Bloom song, and I'm yeah. not surprised and he did it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but because I've noticed you quick. keep. He keeps popping up. It's like, oh, there's Join the Herd again. Join the Herd, yep. Like, the day the episode comes out with a song, Bam, I mean, he's got a here. remix. And it's really well done. And then you feature it. Yep. Because <laughs> it's really well done. How can I not? <laughs> so, yeah. Those are the three I have. Go check them out. Yes. Yeah, and for fan fiction, I got a fat lot of nothing. That's a good fanfic. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? No updates hop it happened, at least as of this morning. And I didn't find... Well, I did find something, but I'm going to hold on to it and hope because apparently there's one last thing the author's going to add. So I'm going to hold on to it and hopefully I will do something with it next week. We shall see. It just depends on how that last bit goes. So it's, it's got my attention. I'm just waiting to see how he finishes it off. How's your attention? Now we'll see if it gets your interest. Mm-hmm. Well, it's already got both. It's just I want. It, I don't want to you know, find out that they did something weird with it in the end or something. It's happened to me before. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little hesitant because they said, oh, yeah, I'm going to finish it off. Like, okay, okay. And then everything fell apart. Exactly. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to go, well, I recommend this. And now I'm, I'm rescinding my recommendation because this ending is crap. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so hopefully that's so nothing this week. So we, I guess we're done. Yep, that's it. <laughs> anyway, if you liked this episode and you want to hear past and future episodes, you can go to pony 411libsyncom Dot com Again, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N. You can also subscribe via iTunes. Search for Pony411 and subscribe there and review and star it. Rate do whatever it. Whatever iTunes lets you do. Yeah, whatever iTunes lets you do. There's also Stitcher, Stitcher.com. Search for Pony411 there. You can also find us on YouTube.com slash Pony411. Or you can also, when you go there, check out our other channel, Pony411Plays. Where we're playing currently, Life is Strange. We're almost done with that. Almost it's almost done. done. I'll watch the roller coaster hit me. Yeah. We're almost done. We're going to have some other stuff pretty soon, so keep an eye out. But back to the podcast. You can also find us on Ponyville FM every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to listen via radio, not download anything. Yay. There's also, of course, PonyvilleLive.com. We show up every single time. We update with a new video, which is, well, every single time we do this an episode. <laughs> what a shocker there. But if you want to contact us, you can email us at pony411podcast at gmail.com with comments, criticisms, questions, concerns, news bits, whatever you want. Well, not news, whatever you want. Please don't send a certain thing. Yes. News bit, yeah. News bit. <laughs> yes. News bit, the mascot. And there's also... Facebook.com slash Pony411. Like, comment, whatever. Like it. Do it. 
Give thumbs us a up. thumbs up. That's where we and there's also Twitter. We're at Pony four one one. That's where we usually do our stuff. Yep. That's also where we make some dumb jokes occasionally. Occasionally. Or we ask you about the episode, you know, when it came out comes out. And we retweet when you reply. Yeah. Usually. Usually. Unless you do something weird. Or you can follow our personal Twitters. I'm at Nemesis Prime One. He's at Alcatraz with a seven instead of the T and an underscore at the end. Yep. I complain about someone complaining about Treasure Planet. And I talk about my car. Don't talk crap about Treasure Planet. I will end you. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. Uh, we're taking next week off because there's no episode. Yep. We're going to do something else in the Denton term. We're not It's gonna. You're not going to see it for a while, though, so just hold on. Yep. But the week after that, though, we'll be back. We'll be back. With episode six, you know, no second prances, whatever the heck that one is. We st- yeah. We don't know yet, but whatever it is, we'll be talking about it. Until then, though, please, pony responsibly, guys. See ya. Bye.